Dan Rojas and today we are going to be making a large forced air heater out of a piece of glass that I found on the side of the road. Somebody was just throwing this away and it's probably from a tabletop or some type of cover for like a entertainment center. This is a slightly tinted piece of glass. Now to make a forced air heater, the clearer the glass you get, the better off you're going to be. Because this glass is free, instead of spending 20, 25 bucks for a piece of glass, this works out a lot better. This will work just the same because the forced air heater that I'm going to make is probably only going to cost about $5 to frame this whole thing out. Now a lot of people email me and ask questions about the canned forced air heater, the one that uses aluminum cans in a series to heat air. Those are okay. If you are starting one of those, you've already got all the materials, go ahead and build it. If you have one, don't tear it off your roof and recycle it. Actually, they're pretty cool because they have a nice little hitch to them and the fact that you can tell your friends, you know, my air is being heated right now by aluminum cans on the roof. So, they'll think you're really smart and very, very earth friendly, but you don't need the aluminum cans. As a matter of fact, they actually work against you, believe it or not. The reason that I say that is, this piece of glass is a set size. The amount of sunlight that hits it is determined by how big it is. Without adding mirrors and flaps and that sort of thing, you cannot increase the sunlight that's going to reach this piece of glass. So your heater is going to be the size of the piece of glass. If you want more sunlight to hit it, you need a bigger piece of glass. It really doesn't matter what you put inside of there in terms of the amount of sunlight that's going to reach your project. This is a spray can. Now, it's different than an aluminum can because it's a little thicker, but the diameter is the same. And the reason that I say that that's important is what makes a forced air heater very, very efficient is the amount of surface area to the hot surface that the air molecules actually come in contact with. Now, with a can, the diameter is very large. So when you have a series of, say, 72 or 36 or however many aluminum cans that you have, the air is going through a very large diameter. Now air wants to find the path of least resistance. So because the heat is mostly on the top or around the outside of the can, you're going to get a thermal barrier of air that kind of stays there and the cool air is either going to sink to the bottom, the air coming out of your house into the forced air heater, and it's going to roll across the bottom. It's going to heat the air very well. So you're going to have air basically heating other air. So it will work, but you don't need the cans at all. Also, when you're building a project like this, the goal is to make it as inexpensive as possible and time-saving as possible. Putting a bunch of cans together can take a really long time. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be taking a flat piece of glass and we're going to be making a very, very thin frame with a metal backing underneath. So you're going to have a sheet of glass with a thin piece of black metal and the air is just going to go right through it and because it's such a thin layer in there you're going to pick up all the heat that's collected or most of it and pump the air out the other side up with a thin piece uh, that's actually pretty cool you can use it for I don't know hobbies or whatever you start your miter 45 degree take it to your edge you don't want to go here you don't want to go to the far farthest out point you set your glass on there and then you pull your glass and you want your edge to have a little bit of space, just a touch. You don't want it to go right to the very edge. So you want it to be like as close to this as you can get it without it being too much. Now when you come over here, you're going to come to the end, which is right here, and you're going to mark your wood. 
you're going to just put a nice line right there and you'll notice that that's just past the outside so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little bit of the black behind and that'll give us the same thing on this side <laughs> So after you do your first cut, you should have a piece that looks like that with the miters coming in like that. So if I lift the glass up, you're going to notice that it sets in there nicely and there's room to hook your miter there and there's room to hook it on the other side. Now I'm going to measure, do the same thing for the links and then what you do is once, once you have... Um, your two pieces measured, you just use the other two as a guide because you know this glass is perfectly square. It's not going to be a different measurement. So these have to be identical. Well, they don't have to be, but the more identical they are, the, the more corner to corner your measurements are going to be pretty much the same and you're going to have a true square, which is going to be really save you a lot of time with sealing the edges up. So we've got the 45 there. Now here's how I get them the same. I made this piece about maybe an eighth of an inch bigger than I really wanted it. So what I do is, I take the two, you want to make sure the back side over here, which you probably can't see, is completely flush. And you don't want to have debris like I have, but um, you want to make sure that it's nice and tight right there. To where you're just going to take a little bit off of the top one, and since these are flushed up, <laughs> You have two pieces of wood that are identical. They are the same size. So when we go to do this, they're going to measure out to be the same. I'm going to do the larger piece now. So what you have to do is you have to reset the cut. This is the reset that I was talking about. So we're going to flip it. I'm going to get rid of this knot too, by the way. So you're going to have a throwaway piece like that, or you can save it for whatever you want. Then you're going to flip it. are completely completely flush if they're not they're going to be different sizes so we're going to do the same thing again we're going to just trim just a touch off so now we have two more identical the same size 